Welcome back. I'm Connie Sokol, your host, and I am thrilled to have our guest today. It's perfect timing with the holiday season coming up, and it is the official Wendy Paul. Hi, happy to have you here today. Hey, thank you, Connie. If you do not know Wendy Paul, what the heck? Get on Studio 5 and see all the great stuff she does on social media. She puts on pictures of meals all the time that I'm like, oh, yeah, okay, going to do that. And then she puts the recipe there so that you can just get the ingredients and make it happen. So I love it. But I'll give you the official bio just in case you don't know. She has been baking and cooking for her hungry family and, you know, with her left toe publishing eight cookbooks along the way. The thing I love about her is that she has this belief system of use what you have. So a lot of her favorite recipes come from just leftovers and stuff that she's had in the fridge and just had handy. None of those, you got to run out and get one of those things you can't pronounce ingredients that you'll never use again. But she is so user-friendly. She is on Studio 5, as well as teaching baking and cooking classes and Zoom cooking classes. Thank you, 2020. And she also makes it easy with meal lists, the grocery list, all of that. So, so fun and fabulous. The thing that I love a lot, like probably the most, is that she makes it real. It's This is in her blood. Like she's just, she wakes up with recipes that she's been dreaming about. I've read this. I'm not kidding. So this is what I love. And she makes, she's got kids. She's got a busy life and she makes it real and fun. Like who knew cooking could have those words in the same sentence. So we are going to talk about how to make holiday cooking meaningful, stress-free and fun. Can you imagine that could even happen? So let's jump right in. Now, I talk a lot about, I have this book called Simplify and Savor the Season. And I talk a lot about letting go of the mom show, that this is not mom has to do the holidays. And that part of the joy that the holidays bring is doing these things together. Now, especially with the cooking, we end up seeing mom in the kitchen and everybody else is doing something else. And then she sort of produces this presentation and we want to get rid of that. So talk to us today about how do we start making that transition from the mom show to it's family buy-in to let's do this together. Okay. Well, that totally goes along with my philosophy, Connie, is because I am not a Pinterest mother. Okay. (laughs) I am a real life busy mom. I work, I feel like I have five jobs outside of the home and I've got four hungry, hungry kids, a hungry husband. And so my whole goal is to get food on the table. Of course, I want it to look nice. And I want it to be a nice presentation because, you know, you eat with your eyes first, right? Um, When you see food, if it's exciting and beautiful, yeah, you want to eat it. It makes you excited and it, it adds to the whole experience. But for me, probably the biggest thing was, um, trying to involve my kids in the meal prep trying to involve my family in those, like in the basics at the very beginning of the meal planning, like, Hey kids, what do you like the most? Or, um, what recipe do you want to see on the menu this week? Because then I get my picky eaters excited. Right. And they're kind of like looking forward to it. Or they're like, Hey, I'm going to help mash the potatoes. You know, my, every one of my kids is picky. People think because I've written cookbooks and I'm on TV that my kids eat everything I make. I would have thought that. No, no. In fact, okay. My 20 year old, she hates any kind of vegetable. Like the only vegetable she likes is potatoes. Okay. That's real. My 17 year old, I just found out he doesn't like cilantro. Are you kidding me? He's one of those few that doesn't like cilantro. I use cilantro in everything. He also doesn't like onions or mushrooms. He will literally pull them out. My 14 year old, she's my easiest one right now. She will eat whatever I make her or whatever she makes. She's just happy. My seven year old, like ramen, we eat a lot of ramen, (laughs) a lot of popcorn and a lot of chicken nuggets. So I am just like the rest of us. Like I am right there with all of us moms in the thick of things, trying to get your kids to branch out, try new things, get them involved in the kitchen so that they're more likely to try something new. Love it. So you've got different ages. How Mm -hmm. do you involve them? Now, I love that idea of getting, I call it the buy-in. I just did that um, last night. Was it last night, Sunday? That I said, okay, here's the ideas for the the menu this week. Uh And what's your thoughts, any changes, whatever, before I go to the grocery store and get the stuff. And I used to have my kids come with me to the grocery store, but now, you know, changes of schedule. So again, I love that point of getting the buy-in, the mini yeses along the way, kind of like a sales presentation, right? You get it is. 
It is. Mm -hmm. What do you do when they're actually in the kitchen? Do you divvy up jobs? Do you just see who's there and pull them in? Do you make a meal night where you assign people? How do you run that? Well, it's a little bit different. I wouldn't say I'm very specific because every day is so different right now that I try not to hold myself to too high of a standard because that causes so much stress in my life. So I kind of take it as it comes really. Um, my 14 year old girl, Cami, she like everyone needs a Cami seriously in their lives. She's a fabulous cook. She's always wanting to try something new and learn. And she is better at her age than I was at that same age. So mm. she's going to just blow me out of the water one day and I'm just going to sit back and enjoy everything she makes. She's your 401k. I love it. Yeah. Yes, she is my, my future earnings. Right. But I, I tried to, I want to let her whenever she's interested in it. So I'm like, sure, no problem. What do you want to make tonight? Or do you have anything specific you want to make this next week? I try to really involve her. You know, I don't want her to have to cook every night. I mean, she's only 14. Like her job is school. But this is like a special little fun thing for her. And I really want to encourage it. So when I see the kids excited about doing something, my first thought is don't discourage it. You know, yes, it makes more dishes. Yes. Sure. You're going to have more things to clean up. Yes, it might not turn out all the all the way, but I try to leave that perfectionism that I have. Yes. I can get really OCD in the kitchen. I mean, it's my job, like, like meals are my job, but I try to just take a step back and take a deep breath and then let them learn. Sometimes not even for me. Sometimes she'll do recipes from other blogs or, or foodies or things she sees on, you know, even TikTok or Pinterest or something yes. like that. She'll see something and then she wants to try it herself. So um, like my oldest daughter, she does not like to cook. And I wonder how in the world did I give birth to someone who doesn't like to cook? But I am wanting her to at least know how to do it. So, so for her... I did a sign. I did a sign a day and I've been lax the last two weeks, but I want her to at least learn how to make things. Even if it's just the basics like spaghetti and meatballs or chili, or, um, she can scramble eggs, right? Really, really good. Make pancakes. Those are great basics for people who don't like to cook or your kids that don't like to, it's a good thing for them to learn how to just do the simple basics like that. So every child's different, Connie, I say, you know, involve your kids, but really watch what they are gravitated to and then just totally let them do it and work with it. I love that. In fact, you bring up TikTok and I was laughing because my kids don't get to go on there very much, yeah. but the only reason why one of them gets to go on it is because she likes the recipes and she, I came in one day and she was making rolls from scratch because what? they were like three or four ingredient rolls. I was like, what? So it was so great. So I love that suggestion of really pay attention to what they're able to do, what they want to do and not putting a square peg in a round hole. And I like the idea of, of keeping it enjoyable. I know we did a America's um, worst cooks. We were watching that a couple of years ago. And so we did a competition where everybody made their own meal and all that. And, you know, we had an Amazon gift card for the winner and it was really cool. It was fun. So I love that you're keeping this sort of a happy upbeat feel. And I love the other idea of, I'm going to say, set the expectation that they do need to leave the home with some cooking skills. And I know that has saved our bacon where they like that simple meals that they can, in fact, i just made a meal the other day, sweet and sour um, turkey meatballs. And the sauce had six ingredients. It was super easy to make. I said, this would be a great meal. And one of my daughters said later, this would last a couple of days at college because she's going to be going to college. So, yeah. you know, making that connection of gee, how could this play out in your life that this is actually going to help as a life skill? So I love that expectation. So it sounds like you try to find different ways. Some people can mash potatoes. Some people can cut vegetables. It sounds like you kind of have this sous chef kind of idea and feel. And, yeah. and it sounds like you're seeing the benefits from that of just having them do a little bit to make it happen. Yeah. And, and it could even be as simple as setting the table for those who maybe aren't ready or don't want to kind of, they don't have the interest, but you want to get them in the kitchen. Um, like I said before, like if your expectations are lowered and you have, um, you want to encourage what they're interested in, 
guess what? They're going to start to come and get more involved and they're going to learn more and they're going to see you do. Do you remember when you were little standing at the feet of your mother and grandmother making those memories in the kitchen? Like whether, even if you didn't get to roll the cookies, you just sat and watched, like those are the kind of things that are etched into our mind and that's how we learn. So it doesn't have to be big. Like don't think it has to be grand and glorious and you have to have this five course meal for dinner. You don't, it needs to be super simple, easy. Try to get a little bit of healthy in there and call it a win for the day. Right. I love that. In fact, that brings me back memories. They start baking with me when they're in a bouncy seat. Yeah. And so I laugh and then they helped with breaking the eggs. I can't tell you how many batches of stuff has gone awry because then they <laughs> dumped in all the baking soda instead of right. the one teaspoon. I'm encouraging. But I love this idea. And this is one of the things I really want to convey in this is how do we create connection in the kitchen? Because that's what it all comes down to. It's not about just the presentation. And I think sometimes women that are listening, you know who you are. It's going to be about the table runner with the candles and the, and don't put that there. That doesn't belong there, right? So this feel of how do we create connection in the kitchen? And even if you're serving it on paper plates, which I often do, especially for lunch and breakfast, because I don't want to be cleaning up all day, but it, it's, <laughs> this, it's the conversations that are happening and the the ability to do that. So how can you create more of the connection, the conversation, especially with those that teenagers maybe that don't really want to hang out with the fam? Maybe they just want to go do their own thing. How do you draw and invite and entice them to come on in? Um, one thing that we've done, you know, let's be honest, I have got three teenagers and then the seven-year-old thinks he's a teenager and so <laughs> It is really hard to form those connections, especially when everyone's got smartphones or, you know, they're answering texts from work or friends or whatever. Um, I, one thing I'd like to do with the kids, um, tell me five things you did today or five things that were really special that happened to you today. That's a great conversation starter for the dinner table. Um, you can do it at bedtime too, but if you want something fun where everyone has to take a turn, and even if you started with, tell me three good things that happened today, it can change our perspective. It can make all those happy memories come to the forefront. And that's what you'll remember around the dinner table is, is that love and connection and the fun things that, I mean, good grief, like you get your family talking and sometimes they don't shut up. They just talk and talk and talk and talk and talk, but that's what you want, right? You want that connection to happen. So that's a great idea to do. Also like just getting in the kitchen and talking with each other as you make things, um, not having phones on, not having, you know, what TV on or whatever, but just, just start asking, how was your day while you're, you know, making rolls or chopping carrots. Like it doesn't have to be anything big or momentous. You don't have to download a printable or anything like that. Just those simple questions, you know, tell me three good things that happened today. Or, you know, was there any time where you felt really discouraged? Do you want to talk about it? You know, the, I think emotions are on the forefront right now. I've noticed lately everyone's emotions are heightened, right? Mm -hmm. But we're hyper aware to everything that's going on. So the other night we were talking about the election, you know, at dinner time, <laughs> ha, imagine that, right? But we're talking because the older kids are more involved and they're, they know more, but my seven-year-old started talking and what he was saying was things that he's heard us all talk about. So it sounded really funny to hear the seven-year-old say things that an adult would say, but that's his perspective because he's with all of us adults. But then to be able to even talk a little bit more, you know, ask him, do you have any fears or, you know, what do you think? And then he, you know, he was able to open up in his own little way, but just simple questions, just easy things. Don't make it a big, a big ordeal, but, um, Sometimes even after dinner, we like to pull out a game like Uno or something like that while we're cleaning up and we can just sit and play or talk or whatever. So yeah. those are some ideas. And just keeping the trickle of that connection and really family meals and the studies are so prevalent out there, the, all the layered gifts and blessings of family dinner. Right. I love this. And I love this idea of making it simple. I know we have that rule of phones away at the table. And sometimes even when we're cleaning up, we'll be like, who wants to choose a favorite song? And it kind of elongates, you know, that time together because so often kids are ready to hop up from the table. It's five to seven minutes and they're like, we're done. I've got things to do. Right. Yeah. So that time is really precious. If we can extend that a little, 
Mm -hmm. I want to switch gears for just a quick second. Okay. And let's go into the actual holiday shifts of that. <laughs> so now All we've right. got holiday meal planning, right? And some of the women are going, oh, here we go. But I think that comes back to that expectation, to production, and, and walking that line between what is going to keep and create that connection in the kitchen. And then, like you said, you eat with your eyes first. What, what can make it a beautiful or keep the traditions or things like that? I love your idea of, of keeping it simple, use what you have, all of those things. How can we marry the two? How can we make that happen, especially with COVID this year? A lot of women are feeling exhausted already and already doing homeschooling stuff and things like that. So how can, how, what are some tricks and tips that we can do to make the holiday dinners simple so that mom isn't stuck in the kitchen and everybody else is doing other fun things? Um, well, like I said before, I think first off involving your kids and getting them in the kitchen too, that will alleviate stress, time. Um, it gets them closer to you. You can start to create those memories of, of just conversation and learning maybe grandma's rural recipe or, Hey, do you want to learn how to make grandma's banana pie since we can't be with her this Thanksgiving or, you know, Hey, I want to teach you something I love or a food memory from my childhood. Now let's talk about that for a minute. Think about when you were a child, Connie, is there something special that you used to eat for dinner? What is it? Spaghetti Monday night. Mom was always making Monday night spaghetti. Okay. Mine was my mother's microwave meatloaf. I kid you <laughs> not. Okay. So those are things like during the holidays, I think, especially just bringing those food memories that we enjoyed as a child, why not introduce them to our children? Cause it brings us joy. It'll bring them joy and they'll see how excited we are to do it. And it kind of just trickles down. Right. So, um, I mean, I'm always making recipes my grandma and mom do, did growing up because I love them and it brings me joy. My kids get excited and they're like, hey, grandma, mom made da 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 last night. And she's like, oh my gosh. And then it brings memories back to her, right? Making it for me as a child. So, so those memories start when we start sharing the memories I think we had as a child. So whether it's mom's microwave meatloaf or Monday night spaghetti or you know, we didn't even do a taco Tuesday. I feel like I was really gypped as a child not having taco Tuesday, but just those simple things. Like you don't have to feel like you have to introduce this big, huge tradition. Um, one thing I look forward to every year, Connie is Christmas Eve at my parents' house. And we probably won't be able to do it because of my dad's, he had heart surgery a year and a half ago. So we're being very cautious for him. Mm -hmm. um, but it's Milfotti's. Have you ever heard of Milfotti's? No. Okay. So what it is, it's the inside of a ravioli and it's um, simmered in sauce, like red sauce. It's the best thing in the entire world. So that tradition started way back with my grandmother who would go and stand in line at a place called the depot in Napa, California, where I was born and raised. And she would buy the Malfatis by the quart and bring them. And she'd pour the quart into like a saucepan and warm it up. And we would eat it by candlelight because the first time we did it, or, you know, one of the first times we did it, we lost power. So we had to eat it by candlelight. So see how things, little things happen. And it, then it becomes this huge tradition. So every year, I'm trying to think of how long I've been married. I've been married 20 years. I bet I've made Malfatis for 15 plus years now for my family for Christmas Eve dinner. So, so I'm carrying on a tradition that my grandma started. And of course we eat it by candlelight. So it's just those fun things that trickle down generation after generation. Now, I don't know if my kids will make Malfatis. I hope, I, I know Cammy probably would, <laughs> she's the cook. But I'm hoping that that'll be something that'll be in their mind. They'll be, they'll be like, oh, that was like three generations ago that mom did that. And it's not hard. It's super easy to do. But those are the food memories. Do you see how food memories just keep going and going and going? And so how right. time, like with this holiday, it's a little crazier with COVID. But um, maybe think of something that you had as a child for the holidays and find the recipe, search one out. If you can't find one, message me and I'll help you come up with one, but, but maybe share it with your family if you share it. And it doesn't have to be extravagant. It could be just a simple recipe. And then lastly, if you're stressed, do not feel guilty about buying side dishes or something already prepared. Let's be real. Okay, everyone's a little more stressed than normal. Don't 
Like there is no mom guilt here. Like you do what you need to do in order to feel safe and not stressed during the holidays. So buy the side dishes, and enjoy it. Like no one even needs to know. You can dust flour on your face <laughs> and walk out with a platter of cookies and everyone will think that you baked them. It, it, there's really like no rhyme or reason. And I don't want people, people to feel like they have to fit in a box, you know, and I have to do this and this and this. Do what matters, what you can do. Do what you can handle because everybody can handle different things. Like I don't mind making a whole Thanksgiving dinner. Like I love to do it, but other people are like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna do? So do what you can do, but don't feel like you have to do everything perfectly and homemade. Like it's okay to buy things. I love that hall pass to be able to just yep. say, cause frankly, we make our own pumpkin pie, but my favorite is the Costco pumpkin pie. That's just all there is to it. We love that pie. It's perfect. Right. It's exactly the way we like it. So that's what we buy. We're like, okay, right. give up the guilt. I get the, yeah. the whipped cream, maybe, maybe homemade, maybe not. Maybe it will just be from the little can. Homemade is so much better though. And all you have to do is whip it and sweeten it. And I have so. a sweet 15 year old who is like your Cammie, who loves to do stuff like that. And she's all Perfect. about presentation. So yeah, everybody needs one of those in their family. Borrow one. Needs one. Yep. I love this idea that you shared with the make the food memories with especially COVID this year. I love that idea of choose family recipes, even if it's just one mm -hmm. from someone who can't be there and then make it maybe when you zoom or things like that, yeah. you can say, look, we made your pie. We made right. your pumpkin bread. We made your thing. So we feel like you're a little bit closer to home. Mm -hmm. I love that idea. Yeah, that that's a fun way. That's a fun way just to do things, even, even from a distance, you know, um, my mother-in-law makes the most amazing banana cream pie, like mm. out of this world, I've never tasted anything better. So years ago, she taught me how to do it. So I've been doing it, but this year I'm teaching my girls how to do it. So I've already decided, you know, we're going to make pies like Tuesday, Wednesday, maybe, and we're going to make the pies together. So that's something that I'm going to be like, Hey girls, we're doing this. This is, you know, plan this time to this time. And let's just make these pies together and have some fun in the kitchen. And you guys can learn the recipes that I've learned from, you know, others. Love that. What a twofer and how fun is that? And again, not overwhelming with everything needs to be homemade and everything tradition, but choosing that. And I know people listening are going to say, are you going to post that banana cream pie recipe? Or is that like in the vault? I should, I should, I should post it. Let me ask my mother-in-law. Okay. I'll ask her if I can share it. And if I can, I will post it because it's a good one. That yeah. would be so fabulous because I love this idea. And maybe, you know, I've, I've been trying to collect over the years and not in an official way, but just recipes in our little binder of these are family recipes. And then being able to take that, not in some cool way. I mean, I literally have a binder and it's typed out in black and white, but just being able to, to keep track of these recipes that I can eventually give my kids when they're married and they go that being able to share these so that they can have them and how much better if they've got the memory of making them together so that they remember how to make them and also the connected memory. So I love that. That's perfect. That's perfect. So in this holiday, um, kind of as we're kind of the last couple of things I want to talk about with the holiday meal planning and things like that, I love that you're giving permission to keep it simple, not having to do everything homemade, but make a food memory. That sounds really lovely. Is there anything as far as, you know, the holidays come like you have Thanksgiving and then you have like three weeks after that, that you still got to like do daily meals. Mm -hmm. And I know you've talked about this uh, kind of alluded to, yeah, we always have the same five recipes that we go to, right? This, right. right. You buy a whole fridge full of groceries, and then you keep doing the same five recipes. So what can we do to shift that easily with the best of intentions, we actually can follow through. What's a good thing for us to start with? Okay, so the first thing I would recommend is actually like writing down a menu. I should have brought mine in here to show you. So on my menu, I do um, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, but I don't assign it a day, okay? Because that's just, like I said, that's just too, yeah. oh, that's just too much stress to know that, you know, I have to do a certain thing on a certain day. And then I buy the groceries or check my pantry, make sure I have all the items to make those right, those required recipes. I post it on the fridge. And then usually in the morning or in the afternoon, I'm like, okay, what of these recipes can I make? Do I have time for to do, you know, and then I try to put it together. And some things I make like in the crock pot or instant pot, or sometimes, you know, Cam, you'll do a dinner and say, hey, what can I make for dinner? I'm like, anything off of that list, you are welcome to make. So 
write it down, have it visible so you can see what it is. Now for like adventures, if you don't want things to be boring. Um, so we love hamburgers at our house. And a while ago, this was a great recipe I did on Studio 5. So instead of a hamburger, I did a hamburger fried rice. So it tastes like a hamburger. Kids will be, you know, if you can get them to take a bite, they'll be like, oh, this is familiar. It tastes just like a hamburger. It's just presented differently. That's actually become a favorite recipe here. Um, maybe try a different kind of chili or something something similar to what you love, but slightly different. So instead of maybe tacos, maybe you do like an open um, um, tostada or like a quesadilla, but you put different fillings inside, not just cheese, but maybe add some chicken or ground beef or um, just think familiar is key when having kids try new recipes, especially little ones or <laughs> older ones like mine that are a little more picky is to make sure something is familiar. Um, there's a familiar base to it. Does that make sense? Oh yeah, absolutely. And that makes total sense because when you're, that probably makes it easier to look and see what you've got in your fridge because you probably have all of the basic ingredients mm -hmm. and then you can kind of toss in something different that right. will shake it up a little bit and add a little bit of variety. And that's a great thing. I know we do um we found a recipe for an open tostada that you're talking about where it's rotisserie you put a little bit of barbecue sauce rotisserie chicken a little more barbecue sauce mozzarella cheese and then red little things of red onion and boom we just broil it i mean it's literally nice. five minutes and my kids can make them and so it was a different thing than just we're doing tacos or a burrito or whatever right right so i love that like things that are easy to formulate into different flavors, breakfast, pizzas, pizzas are great. You don't have to just do like mozzarella and red sauce. You can do barbecue sauce. You can do um, like your favorite salad dressing, like ranch. I mean, you can really change the flavors, but still have like a, like a familiar traditional meal, just like what you talked mm -hmm. about the tostadas. That'll just change it up enough to where you're not bored. Like, I try is I I love to cook. So in when I sit down and do my meal plan, I try to have at least two new recipes. I try every week. But I like new, I like to try things. I'm always coming up with recipes and my family just has to deal with it. Like that's just what they do. But if you start doing that and you want to introduce new things, that's what you eat. Like my grandma Wooly was a genius and she said you have two choices for dinner. Take it or leave it right? Love. So, so, you know, sometimes the seven-year-old will sneak a thing of ramen when I, you know, head to the bathroom or go in the other room. And that's okay. Like he's still seeing that things are new. They're different. It's not too crazy, but you know, mom mostly makes good meals. So I guess I'll take a bite or two. And then he's like, well, why is it all gone? I'm like, cause you wouldn't eat it. So everybody ate it. He's like, well, I really like that. I'm like, I've only served raviolis, Connie, 20 times. <laughs> so it's just taking him that long to get there. But they do, they'll get there. And if it's familiar or they're like, hey, just take a little bite and try it. You know, things, things you just have to repeat. Like, it's that's true. how we are. That's how we are as humans. We need things repetitive and we need to see things over and over and over again before we realize it's okay. So, I love that. You are so right. I, when I did the sweet and sour meatballs, I used turkey meatballs and he was, my eight-year-old was like, what's this? I said, it tastes like, you know, a meatball, like a, a, a regular meatball. And so he's like dabbing his little tongue on it. Like, really? And he's like, oh like, yeah. Okay. This are, is you sure? yeah, are you exactly. sure about that mom? I know. I love that. I love that idea of just try to keep it familiar on those basics and then add in. Yeah. And that's, it's so good for kids to get used to seeing different things. I know I did not like cottage cheese when I was young, but whenever mom had it, she had us just put a little spoonful on our plate and said, a little dab will do you. You can just dry a little bit, just a little bit. And it really started to get my taste buds a little bit accustomed to something different. So I didn't have to eat a whole bunch, but just that opening it up to something else. Right. Just try a little bit. Yep. Just a little bit. 
And I love the idea too. I noticed one of your posts the other day, you were, had a charcuterie board. Oh yeah. For those that are out there, it's just basically a nice wooden paddle board or a rectangle. Mm -hmm. And you just put an arrangement of things. And what I loved that she had done is she had done a leftover charcuterie board. <laughs> yeah. so instead of like pulling out leftovers on the counter and they're in bags and tubs and it looks gross, that you made it pretty. And there was olives and pickles and, and sandwich meat and things like that. And they were all in kind of these waves of presentation on there mm -hmm. it only took you know five minutes maybe 10 minutes but yeah it looks so pretty and then you add the crackers and suddenly it was like oh we can all hang out around the counter and let's eat yummies mm -hmm. and it wasn't it's left overnight so I love yeah. that idea any other tips for keeping it kind of fun that way well I well let's be honest I am not a fun mom like I <laughs> That was not given to me. I have to really think outside the box to be a fun mom. Charcuterie boards are great for that because you can clean out the fridge, use what you have, lunch meat, crackers, leftovers, whatever you want to do, throw it on a big plate or a big board or even a baking sheet. If you don't have a wooden board, use a baking sheet and just fill it with all your kids' favorites, everything you need to eat, all the leftover vegetables and fruits and pile it high and then everybody just sits and mingles and they pick what they want or they try something new. I mean, that's probably the fun. I think that's the funnest meal. I'll get really close. That's the funnest thing I do as a mom in the kitchen is a charcuterie board. But um, maybe, I mean, it's cold right now, but maybe have dinner outside, make that a tradition. That's really fun. We love to eat outside. And you know, in Utah, you have like two weeks in the spring, you can eat outside. And then you have like maybe two weeks in the fall, you can eat outside without like freezing or dying of heat stroke. So maybe eat outside or maybe do a picnic on the floor and watch a movie while you're eating. That would be a really fun thing to do as a family. And um, like many, oh, here's another fun thing I do. I am, okay, two things I do fun, charcuterie boards and make your own pizzas. Oh, fun. So I'll make a, a big recipe of pizza dough. And if you don't have a recipe, I've got one on my website. It's super easy, foolproof. Make the recipe and then have a bunch of toppings set out and everybody can pick their own topping, make their own pizza. Everyone's happy. Um, it gets you in the kitchen again, gets the kids hands on, learning how to make stuff themselves, what flavors they like. Trial and error is really what it's all about. So that's another fun thing to do. We love to do pizza night at our house. Love that. So instead of like calling up, you know, the local pizza pizzeria right. or stopping at five bucks that, you know, you can like go in and just make it simple. And I know people have used, you know, pre-frozen rolls and things like that to do that when they're like, yep. no, I really don't want to make the actual dough. So there's shortcuts to do it. But I so agree. I think that's a beautiful way of looking at meal planning with the lens of how can we create some connection? It doesn't have to be every meal just maybe a couple of meals during the week of how can we do this to create connection? And yeah. I'm just gonna kind of review a little bit here as we're wrapping okay. up. I love the idea of getting, um, you eat with your eyes first. So thinking about just a couple of simple ways to make it pleasing. And then I love set the expectation that they're gonna have to learn some cooking life skills. Yeah. And then the need for production, focus on connection in the kitchen. That's what I was just saying, looking through this lens of how can we connect and the family buy-in, get the help and then making food memories. Mm -hmm. I love this. Yep. Is there any last thought for moms going into the holidays, bracing themselves for the cooking adventure ahead? Anything that you haven't shared today that you're like, one last thing I'd love to share is anything like that? Well, the one last thing I'd love to share is look for ways to simplify your time. Okay. Um, don't feel like you have to do it all in one day. You know, I, my aunt told me this a long, long time ago. It was probably before I even got married, but your house can be cleaned, your kids can be clean and in clean clothes, your laundry can be done, you can be put together, or dinner can be made on time. Like, you choose three of the five things, and don't stress too much about the others. It's okay to let things go, it's okay to not have that perfection, but choose the things you want to get done today and then do them the best you can. That's really all the things we need to do as a mom is just do them best we can, make sure that our kids know that we love them and then just try to enjoy the time together at the holidays because, you know, everything's different, everything's different. And so let everything else go. Like just put it aside, 
no mom guilt. Don't look at your neighbor or even don't look at me on Instagram when I post this really good picture of food, because guess what? I probably have my hair up in a messy bun. I haven't washed my hair in days and I'm wearing leggings and slippers. So it's just give and take, like, don't be hard on yourself, but make some fun memories in the kitchen with the food, you know, gather your family around the table. Cause when it, when it all comes down to it, that's what really counts. It's just making those memories together, having those connections, right? Like what we talked about earlier and food memories are some of the most like, I wouldn't say important, but most pivotal memories, right. Of childhood and growing up and being together as a family, it usually is revolved around a recipe or time together spent at the table. Oh yeah. And like you were saying, it just helps us to bond, to connect, to see one another, hear one another, make the jokes and the banter. That's really the simplicity of it is stunning actually, that we have this ritual every day that we can take advantage of and we don't have to make it a production. We don't have to uber stress it, but we can look through this lens of how can I create this connection, this time, even if it's 10 minutes or 15 minutes, it's okay, but how can we make it meaningful? Just yeah. a little bit more today. I love it. Wendy, Paul, if women are listening, like I know they're going to be insane, where can I get the recipes? Where can they go to get the recipes and get more from you? Okay, so easiest way is to follow me on Instagram. So I am the real Wendy Paul. There's a story behind that, but I'll share that a different time. So the real Wendy Paul, I post a lot of recipes. Plus I have a link in my bio that highlights a lot of my most popular recipes or current recipes that I'm doing. My website is a great resource too, wendypaulcreations.com. And then if all else fails and you're looking for something specific, don't be afraid to message me and I'll get you the link or try to help you out. Um, but that's what we're all here for, right? Is to help each other, to connect with each other and to make some great memories. Love it. And are your cookbooks available on Amazon? Yes. So yep. cookbooks are on Amazon, also on my website to purchase. So if you want maybe a special treat for the foodie in your life, I would love to sign it and get that to you before the holidays. Love, 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 love. And so many good recipes. I've loved trying your recipes. It's just been such a fun thing. And I love seeing how you do this in everyday family life. You really keep the fun in food. Thank Thanks. you so much for joining us today. Thank you, Connie. And ladies, as always, if you love this podcast and you can rate, review and subscribe below. And as always, if you want more goodies, my freebies, your find your purpose challenge, the joy challenge, all of those good things, programs, retreats, all of the goodies, my TV segments and blog posts, go to ConnieSokol.com and I've got you covered so that you can take the next step in living your purposeful, organized and joyful life.